Joey Current writes, what are the best ways to tell if a studio has faith in a movie? Budget, marketing, premiere? Thanks. Um, all of the above. Uh, by, by looking at a budget that can show confidence, it can also show irresponsibility. Yeah. Uh, gambit, anybody. Um, the, the promotion of it, how much marketing they put into it is another one. Um, you know, a big one to me, and this is only, but you can only tell this a couple of weeks out, is how soon do they screen it yep. for critics? Yep. <laughs> That's a big flag. Because if they start screening it for critics early, like two weeks out, three mm -hmm. weeks out, that means the studio knows we believe critics are going to love this and we want them to start buzzing now. Right. When it's, we'll screen it for the critics the day before release, giant red flashing light. And there's, and there's an embargo for it for release. To open yeah, you can't, uh, you can't release your review for it until the movie opens. Oh, so basically you believe we're going to hate it and you just don't want us to let other people know that we hate it. Yep. Fair enough. Now we know. That's Now, Star Wars was That's a different, an exception yeah. to that because Star Wars was is a cultural phenomenon and there were major, major spoilery right. things in that movie that they just wanted to keep a zip lid on and not let get out. I understand that, so that's cool. But don't tell me that for a fifty million dollar movie with some stupid plot lines. Oh no, we're just uh, doing it so spoilers don't get out. No, shut up. You're doing it to hide the movie. Right. Um, so just a couple that come to my head. Uh, any jump out to you? No, I think you, you nailed them. So. Yeah, I think marketing I would put up there first. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. Most thing. yeah, the hiding one is the biggest red flag. We're like, how come there are no reviews for it? You know, we're like dropping We're hiding it. Right it. On, yeah, hiding right. it. Yeah. yeah. All right, what's next? Michael Small writes, with concussion and Suicide Squad, would you say Will Smith is officially back? Mm. Um, the only reason I'm hesitating to answer that is because I don't know that Will Smith went anywhere. Right. I mean, he put out a couple of stinkers, but it's not like he's had a 10-year track record of failure or anything like that. He's, he's still Will Smith. Um, so... I will say no, he's not back because I don't think he ever went anywhere. So anyway, that's how I would answer. Well, I mean, he did have a, a couple of hiccups. I mean, he had that. And he, sure, like he had his After Earth. Yeah, and, and he had Men in Black 3 was well, pretty horrible. Yeah, but the, it, was but the, had some success. it was the After, after Earth set him back, not only because it was a stinker of a movie, it was because he made the decision and he, and he pulled the nepotism card and threw his son in there and it was very clear and he knew that, they were, that the whole thing, he stepped back. There was a lot a of backlash bit. to that. So sure. he, he did kind of go away for, I mean, Albeit not very long, right. but he but, and now he's coming back. Now, what I'll say about concussion, even though it wasn't a huge uh, success, but it was he was amazing in the movie. The movie I thought was fine, but he was great in it. Mm -hmm. So as far as his acting goes and his ability goes, I agree, he's gone nowhere. His, he he hasn't taken a step down because even in After Earth, for what he was in, he was fine. Um, but that's why when we're talking about Bad Boys Three, when he hits another big commercial franchise. Because we know that he can crush it every time he's in these Oscar type movies and everything right. too. So when he does, when he gets back on top, I think that he should have done the Independence Day movie. I really think he should have. I think that he would have added a little bit more to that franchise. But he'll be back soon. I just don't think we can give him the all the way back yet. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think it, whenever you see him in interviews and stuff, the guy's charming. He's incredibly funny, and he's also a, has the ability to be an incredible actor. So. Whether he he he's not the box office draw that he was twenty years ago, right. that's for sure. He's not Big Willie opening on July fourth, but that doesn't mean he sucks now. He's still a great actor and he still has that draw. It just depends on what the next bit like what kind of big project. Like concussion is not a big project. That's like an actor's piece of vehicle. So what big movie is he going to do? If he does that Bad Boys three, that's going to put him back in that game, so to speak. Or he has to. He has to pick another bigger franchise. Obviously, that's why he was like, look, I'll be in a group movie for Suicide right. Squad, so I don't have to be the only guy, but I want to be part of these bigger films. So that's it. I think that's his way leveraging back in. Yeah, he's also made a few mistakes in the past with passing on big franchises. Yes. Remember, he was neat. He was supposed to be Neo. They wrote that for him. Yeah, in he, was Matrix. Supposed to, well, also, he was supposed to be the lead in Django Unchained. Right, right. so there were a lot of things that he, is, he has maybe said no to that this time with the way that Warner Brothers is making a push in the DC universe that he jumped at his chance, even though it was a, you know, a, a, an ensemble. Totally. All right, what's next? Joey Current writes, what is the juiciest secret about a movie that you couldn't tell anyone until it came out? Damn. Oh, man. I can't, the true answer to that I can't even answer because I can't even let on that I knew. Uh... Well, we all saw Star Wars like a week and a half before it came out. I saw Avengers two weeks before it came out. So but I, I mean, like talk you about... knew even before you saw the movie, like something you knew about a movie even long before the movie even came out that you weren't allowed to say. Oh, 
uh, yeah, like uh, the Avengers Age of Ultron set visit. Well, yeah, because you were on set. Yeah, yeah. So yeah I couldn't talk big. about Vision. I couldn't talk about what any of the characters looked like or what was happening with like you know Ultron things like that. So that was hard, especially for me because I'm a stupid nerd. So I want to share the excitement. So you know, I might have told a couple of my close friends, but I swore them to yeah. do not say anything. So you know, but that's how all secrets are. So as similar for me for the Ant Man set visit. You know, when yeah. I, I got to see like when they they took us twice. The first time when we went, actually went to the set visit in Atlanta, and then they right before the movie came out, we went to San Francisco to ILM and watched a lot of the footage, and they showed us the scene of Ant-Man and the Falcon mm. um, and I was like ah, ah, and nobody and nobody knew that, that was coming out and they showed us that and we couldn't say anything and I'm like ah. <laughs> so that was the one all right what's next Jonathan Peck writes pitch your comedy dream team my pick is Rogan Franco Peg Frost and Kean Peel please make it happen Damn. Uh, I, I actually don't think that movie would work it's it's just too, it's too, it's just too much yeah comic. it's just it's just too much a very what about nice three or... different teams all set to go you know do something so you just <laughs> cut it up um, I think best comedy teams work in small teams right. whether you're talking about like an Abbott Costello a Kean yeah. Peel uh, a John C. Riley and Will Ferrell um, I mean, every once in a while you get these movies like Anchorman, which is a larger conglomerate, but that's sure. like a, that's your true lead anchor guy, no pun intended, right. with uh, some supporting players around him. So I actually don't think a comedy with all those right. names, I don't think it would gel well. I don't think it would work. I want to see like a dramedy with um, Steve Carell and Louis C.K. Because they, oh my god, that would be awesome. Because they both come from the starting in comedy, being really funny dudes, and both have transitioned into both being really good dramatic actors. And I think that to see them in a comedy like that, whether that they were friends who, you know, something, or maybe they were mortal enemies at one point, then they're friends, or maybe they're just buddies and they're on a road trip, whatever it is. I'd like to see those those two guys. I want to see Ryan Reynolds and Will Smith team up in a buddy cop film because I think those guys' chemistry. They were on yeah. a show, uh, Graham Norton show. They were riffing, they were laughing, they were joking. I was like, man, that is a dream team right there. Yeah. You know, you brought up Carell. I don't know why. I, I, I find it odd that people, Steve Carell's not getting more chatter for his role in The Big Short this year. He, I, th I'm with I you, thought man. he was. He was so good I actually in that think movie. he might have yeah. been better in that than he was in Foxcatcher. Because mm. he was, and he was damn good <sighs> was in Foxcatcher. Foxcatcher. Very he, different he, character. You ever seen interviews with that real dude that he played? Yeah. I mean, he. That he was that guy, man. It was right. it was creepy. That uh, Foxcatcher for me is the one that I, he's so good in it. It's a that very it's, creepy film. I can't even watch the damn thing yeah. again. It's so <laughs> creepy. Yeah. All right, let's take two more. Right. Dylan Davidson writes: Would a Plagueis Palpatine anthology movie interest you guys? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I well, you didn't read the story, did you? The, the, the did you read Plagueis? The, yeah, did you read the list? I didn't read Plagueis. The, that's the same author of Tarkin. Um, right. And from way, the way he set it up, that book is a damn gangster film. It is amazing. You you will change your tune if you read that story, um, because I understand. You're like, yeah, I've seen it before. Yeah. The, it, the opera, the way that James Lucino put in that book, it's the one thing of the canon that got wiped out that I was like, oh, because. But they brought elements already from the previous book and, into the canon. And, 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 well, what James about, Lucino was able yeah. to do it. What about Snoke Jar Jar? Now, that could oh, be, yeah, I'm down. That could I'm be down. a canon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last question of right. the day. Sammy Scores writes, what movie, if any, have you walked out on? Bushwhacked. Uh, bushwhacked. <laughs> I've walked out on three movies. Uh, the first one was uh, Dark Water with uh, Jennifer... Connelly. Yeah. Jennifer Connelly. I walked out on that. That was horrible. Then I walked out on the Johnny... The guy from Jackass. Uh, John Knoxville. I yeah. walked out on the Johnny Knoxville film uh, about Olympics the Special one, Olympics yeah. one. Uh, I think it was called The Ringer. Because I yeah, get it. Yeah. They were they were trying to in, empower and, and embolden special needs Olympians and stuff like that. But it actually came across just as mean mm. and dirty to me. I don't mean dirty as in sexy dirty. Yeah. I mean, like, just... It felt like we were making fun of people with special needs the whole time. And I was I just was very uncomfortable with it. And I ended up leaving. Then the third one was more recent, and it was Movie 43. Hmm. I was in that one for about 10 minutes. I was with me and my buddy Soul Video. We were watching it, and we were, me and him, and there were two other people in the theater, and it was opening weekend. And I'm watching it, and I turned him like 10 minutes, and I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> and I just got up and I left. Yeah. So. Uh, watch the face. I almost walked out last night at Zoolander, too. 
Yes. Uh, no. I, 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 You're I ruining did. it for me. I almost did, but then I was like, I'm going to stick through it. And, and I, then and you stayed. hated yourself for staying. No, right? no, no. 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 It, it's, it's just the movie's not for me. But um, but I, that Bushwhack <sighs> was the one that I, that I walked out of. You ever walk out on one? I did recently. Last year, uh, Holly and I both, we, we did that look. Like, we almost walked out on that Ridley Scott. What was that one? with The the the, 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 the lawyer one. The Michael adjuster. The, yeah, the, what was that called? The counselor. The counselor. The counselor. Yeah, oh, the adjuster. God. I would go see the adjuster. It's about insurance sales. Yeah, these adjusters. Adjusting numbers. The one I, we walked out on last year was Let's Be Cops because uh, I was hook, line, and sinker from those trailers. This is going to be so funny. It's like, got that, you know, all the actors. What's that guy from the comedy series? Uh, it's got the, the guys from Jake. New Girl. Yeah, yeah New yeah, Girl. He's yeah. really funny. So I was like, that's going to be funny. And then, like, about 45 minutes into it, I was like, this sucks. Yeah. And it's not what we they promised us in the trailer. And we left. So I don't know. Maybe it got better at the end. So, uh, you guys saw that film? Uh, I have, it's been sitting in my DVR for the last oh, year. Man. Yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. one of the more recent ones. Hey guys, if you like this clip, click here to watch the entire episode. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel because it'll help you stay up to date with all the stuff we've got going on here at Collider.